Hey everybody, Jordan here with Farm Builder, and it's been a while, but it's time for some new videos. Some uh, things we want to show you here this winter, uh, kind of orient around farming in the winter. It's kind of what's on our mind. One of the most common problems that we have here in Virginia, and maybe you have if you're in a area where you get freezing weather and then warm weather and mud and snow and ice and back and forth all winter, is getting water out to those animals out on pasture. And what we're going to show you today is how we have solved that problem. So without further ado, let's show you the invention. One of the more common ways to get water out in the field if you don't have a buried water line is to use these IBC tanks or totes, as you can see here. And these are the ones where you open the valve on the bottom and water comes out. Now, common problem with these things is when it gets below freezing, they have a tendency to freeze up on the bottom and that valve busts because there's a ball of water stuck in there that freezes shut. A couple winters ago we were struggling with this and tanking water around every day to multiple groups of animals and I had the idea of what if we could get away from having to deal with this freezing tank issue. We then could leave the tank out there all the time and access water from it whenever we wanted. The issue that became apparent, though, was if you leave the tank out there, it eventually turns into a block of ice. You cannot open the valve, you can't pour the water out, and you're pretty much stuck with a useless chunk of ice. But one of the things we did notice was that chunk of ice never actually freezes solid in the core of it. It is merely the top that will begin to freeze first, then the sides, and then the bottom. And so you'll end up with this igloo, basically, of ice in your tank but it has water in the core. What if we could access that water in the core? And that led through the process of developing the system to have a frost resistant winter waterer. So our premise is we are going to draw water from the core of the tank, not the valve on the front or the bottom of the tank or the top. We want to draw water from the core. So in order to do that, we are going to put a pipe through the valve mechanism and tee it up into the core of that tank. Now it'll be at an angle, so when we turn the unit off, the water will flow out and it will be an empty pipe that is protruding out of the tank through the, uh, the, the ice zone, you could say, out to wherever your animals are in whatever drinking trough you're using. That is not important uh, for this device to work. So here's the components of how we put this together. And we prototyped a model last winter, went through some pretty cold weather for uh, Virginia here, five degree nights, 20 degree days for weeks on end, proved out that it freeze around the top, sides, bottom, but we could still access the core of our water. And so this is the basics of converting an IBC tank into a frost freeze resistant tank. I won't say proof because I'm pretty sure if you threw it out there in 50 below weather for a week, it's just going to be a solid chunk of ice. But this will address a lot of these mid-Atlantic to, you know, maybe upper mid-Atlantic, south maybe, where you don't have a buried water line, and you need to get water out there with your animals. So we'll go through the basics. There's really only two components here that are kind of out of the norm of what you would be able to find at a Lowe's. So we'll just walk through this real quick. This is the valve off of the bottom of the IBC tank. Now, one thing I did learn is important is you need to find an IBC tote that has this kind of valve, preferably, where there is no post through the center of the valve. If there is, you can still work with it, but you have to cut it off. And then ideally, one that is machine threaded here on the front, and this will be a two inch machine thread. This worked out coincidentally for us that these tanks have the right one, um, but it made it much more simpler than our prototype model. All right, the next components over here is, this is something you can get off of Amazon. This is a two inch to one inch plastic reducer, and this will attach to the front of our IBC valve. And this is another key component off of Amazon. This is about $20 part, so not entirely cheap but worth it and this is a very simple valve you can see inside there there's that little stopper and when it's pushed down water will flow when it goes up it stops 
the flow of water. These are the other components um, that you'll see as part of this build. We have four um, PVC adapters here to one inch thread. We have two elbows to one inch machine thread, a 36 inch bungee cord here, one two foot piece of one inch PVC, two eight inch pieces, two cans of black spray paint, and you're probably wondering what these are for, these ratchet straps. We're really not going to focus much on that for this video because you can put this contraption on any kind of elevated platform you would like. Um, what you'll see we use is a pallet platform, but you could put it on a trailer. You could put it on a stationary uh, you know, pile of rocks. I don't know, whatever. Something just to get it up in the air so the water will flow out of your tank. These are the tools. We have... This is a... Uh, this was the most expensive tool to buy, and this is a one-inch tap. And what this does is it allows us to tap this thread here all the way through this adapter, and you'll see why here in a minute. Um, the wrench to use that with, this is a one-and-five-eighths socket, a pipe wrench, PVC glue, and Teflon tape. So this is all of the parts that you will see to convert this into this frost resistant waterer together. So uh, the first thing we're gonna do is we have our two inch to one inch uh, reducer and we're gonna bore that thread all the way through. So we're gonna start on the side that already has the thread, the one inch side. We're gonna run this puppy through. All right, and then we're gonna run it through the two inch side just to clean up the uh, inside of the threads there. All right, so we've cleaned up all those threads. So what we're gonna do from here is we're taking one of the one inch PVC to one inch threaded, and we're threading it inside of the two inch section. So we'll move over here a little bit so you guys can see. So you have the two inch side, we've cut the threads through. Now we're gonna thread that in. Oh, almost forgot. We're gonna use Teflon tape on these. All right, so we've gotten that caught in there. This is where we'll need the socket. First step here, it's the one inch reducer, thread it into the back side of the two inch coupler. All right, we now can take, this is our valve from the bottom of the IBC tank. So this is what goes on the tank. This is coming out the front, very normal to what you would see. We're gonna Teflon tape that as well. All right, try this again. Wow, that Teflon does not wanna stick. And we're gonna thread. So we have our reducer here with the PVC and then that is going to thread on here and then be tightened firmly. <laughs> All right, so now we have our mechanism of the IBC valve, our two to one reducer with the one inch PVC inside. So open the valve there. There you go. And you can see that down in there. Okay. I'm going to set that to the side for a minute. Now, we'll grab our PVC glue here. We've got a two-foot piece of one-inch PVC. We're going to take our one threaded elbow, one-inch threaded elbow, glue it on here. No primer. This is not a pressure application. <laughs> All right. Got that sucker on there. So we've got our pipe with the elbow on it. Then we're going to take our Carrick valve, I guess it's what's called patent, patent pending, and put tape on it and thread it in. Pieces here. It's going to look just like that. 
All right, some of our other pieces here. We have four washers. They don't necessarily need to be washers, but that's what I'm using here. We have an eye bolt, just something that we had laying around. Put them together like this. And then on the end of our valve, these are gonna get screwed in to that spot. Okay. Thusly. So I'm gonna tighten this puppy up. Sacrilege to the drill bit, I know. Okay, and what this is going to do inside of our tank is act as a counterweight. So when it's closed and we want to open it, it'll drop right open. Make sense? We have our 30 inch, uh, 36 inch bungee cord. That's going to go through the hook here and then we're going to squeeze that shut with a pair of pliers. Now we've done pretty much everything for this part of the build. So we'll shift over to another location here and show you how we put it in the tank here and what we're gonna do is put the components in. So we got the lid on the top. Spin that off here, don't need it. Uh, our valve side is right here. And what we're gonna do is take our uh, valve assembly here, fishtail it through the top of the tank and out the hole in the bottom, just like this. Got hold of the little bungee here. I'm gonna hang that on the edge of the lid for now, and then at the bottom of the tank, we'll be able to glue it on. We have our IBC valve assembly with our reducer on it that you've saw before. Now, what we're gonna do is put glue on this pipe and glue it to our IBC valve assembly. We'll be going through there and it'll be gluing into that um, PVC adapter that we put in there. Oh, hello, kitty. I have a guest. I want my valve inside to be aligned with my yellow valve out here um, just so it will screw on a little bit easier. So that turned over to the left. Got my valve to the left, feeling it through. There we go. So I'm seating in there. So that's glued on the interior now. And now I'm just going to thread it into the tank. And once I've got it as tight as I can by hand, and we'll turn the whole assembly. So now that's back to the upright position. And you'll see when we look inside the tank that our shuttle valve will now be in the correct configuration. Now, something else that's been very helpful is to paint these tanks black. So what we have is two cheap cans of spray paint, literally like $1.50 a can. And we're gonna spray paint this tank black so it will soak up more solar energy when it's sitting out there in the sun on a 15 degree day. All right, I think we're done here. Now, if you're wondering why we left this strip open, that's so we can see how much water is in the tank without having to peek through the top. So we'll let this puppy dry and then we'll go out in the field and we'll show you how they work out there with the pigs. All right, here we are. So waited a few days after our last scene here because we had the polar vortex coming. Um, so it is zero or two degrees right now. Um, it's like 8.30 in the morning. This is one of our units out here in the woods with a sow set and it hasn't been messed with yet today. We've had under, uh, or I just to say about a week of under freezing weather at this point. So this would be a good test to see if this puppy is going to flow first thing here in the morning. First thing I'm going to do is knock some of the ice out of the trough. I'll break the ice in the top of the tank and then we'll see if it works. It's the moment of truth.
we have action? Go. Had a piece of ice stuck to the top of the bungee so it was making it float. But alright. So it's a zero degree morning and our tank is flowing fine. It's got about uh, two inches of ice on the top of it, probably some on the bottom. And you saw the amount of ice I had to knock out of the tank here first. But we have flowing water up here in the woods where the pigs are. And we can go on about our chores and take care of business. Not have to worry about getting water out here every day. So, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope you uh, were able to take away some of the construction designs on how we do these things. Maybe it's something you can implement on your farm. Not saying this is gonna work for those of you up in uh, Minnesota with 52 below zero. That's a whole nother ball game, I'm sure. But if you're in the uh, part of the country where you get under freezing weather for a while, maybe 30 degrees during the day, 10 degrees, zero at night, kind of that yo-yo back and forth. These have really saved us a bunch of time. Uh, we've gone from spending two hours every day toting water around to all our animals to now uh, every day to now once a week, we spend four hours running water to all these units that we have around. So we're going from 14 hours, 15 hours a week, down to four hours a week. So it has uh, saved us a lot of time on labor and machinery wear and tear. Until next time, guys, we'll see you around. Get after it.